the shot up. He's got Rhodes Brown to his left. He drives it. Oh, what a goal! Villarre produces the goal that matters for Chelsea. Hello Chelsea supporters, here at the Blue Day Podcast, it is my pleasure to introduce you to our guest today. He made 101 Chelsea appearances, scoring 41 goals. Plus he played alongside the likes of Johnny Bumstead, Clive Walker and Gary Chivers. Here is Mike Fillery. Mike, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'll just correct you on 181 games. (laughs) Pardon me, 181 games. Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. It's nice to meet you. No, no, likewise, and thank you very much for inviting me down to your lovely home. It was uh, a, an interesting drive, but it was uh, well worth it. <laughs> Welcome to the jungle. Well, <laughs> Mike, I want to start off if I can uh, with the interview by asking what made you decide to become a professional footballer in the first place? Um, nothing really. We used to play out on the street and around the park. I mean, Dad used to play with Tottenham Mitchell and... Daly Jamlet and teams like that, so I was always watching him play. Um, I just went from there, you know. It's um, I played for the, the Merton Borough team. Um, that was, how can I explain it? I was playing two years out of my age group. And then I got invited, I was 10 years of age, I got invited to go to Aston Villa. And my dad took me, to, they picked me, I was going to Germany. And that was my first I've ever, ever met them, right, you know. And we went to... They met, we met them up at Tower Bridge. They picked me up at Tower Bridge. And I was crying my eyes. I didn't want to go. It was the first time I'd been away from home from mum and dad and all that like. And my dad forced me to get on the coach. And uh, I was well, 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 it was brilliant. I had a fantastic time. And then uh, that was my first uh, professional club. And I was with them for a while. I was going up in the summer holidays and staying at um, Golden Cowans. Do you remember Golden Cowans? Well, Golden Cowans, his dad had, um, you know, the, for the youth set, they had a, a house where they always used to stay and they used to put us up there, like, you know. So I was doing that, and then um, Chelsea came in for me, like, and my dad knew Dario Grad if he played with him at Tottenham Mitchum and all that, and then they found out that they asked me to go and train over there. So I was training there from 10 years old for, for Tuesdays and Thursday down at Mitchum. And then um, I was fortunate enough to get in the England school boys. When I was 15, that was, and played twice at Wembley and scored a couple of goals at Wembley. It was on, well, it's televised on the box. We think we beat France 5 2. Um, and then Arsenal wouldn't be going to, oh, wouldn't be going, that was a time when they signed you as schoolboys, like, you know, associated schoolboys, I think it was called. And um, Arsenal, they, they were, I was training there two nights a week and Chelsea two nights a week, like, you know. So I was playing football, I was playing all the time. Like you're playing at school, you're playing with your borough, you're playing with your Sunday team. It just went on and on and on, like, you know. And um, Arsenal, eventually, they offered me dad money for me to sign for them. At the time, we didn't have a lot of money. And I said, well, take the money, baby. He said, no, 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 you're broke. At the time, they had Brady and Ricks and the, like Staple and all them playing. And he said, although Butcher just got in the first team at Chelsea, Chelsea had seemed the better option. It was my club, like, I love Chelsea, like, you know. So he turned down the money, Bertie me off at him, and I was saying that the sign for Chelsea, like, you know, and it went from there. And who were your idols growing up? Because you said, obviously, you'd done a lot of football. Was there anybody that you wanted to idolise as a kid? Obviously, Jules Best and Bobby Charlton, really. So I wanted to say that. It was true. He, it was true, Matt. True. He's just died, isn't he? Um, it was just Jules Best and Bobby Charlton. I said, oh, them two, like, you know. Now you you mentioned obviously you had the chance to go to Arsenal you didn't you went to Chelsea instead you what was it like in the youth setup because obviously it was a lot different back then to what it is now but what are your earliest memories of going through the ranks at Chelsea? Okay, for the rank, well we had Dario Gray, Ken Shalato, did I mention Eddie Heath? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not mentioning that. <laughs> um, yeah. We, it was a fantastic, so we had some great players there, like, you know, you had your, um, you obviously had Chivs, you had Gary Johnson, Jimmy Clare, uh, 
Um, you can name off the back of your hand. Like we had players like Russell Keane was a good player as well, you know. Um, who else did we have? Oh, yeah, Timmy Elm was coming through. Um, Kevin Ells was there, you know. Mm. And we had, and the ones up, up in front of us, you had Tommy Langley, Trevor A. Lott, Johnny Bumpstead. Mm. They were all like grew up together, like, you know. It's so I, I call it proper Chelsea, like, because we grew up through the ranks, like, you know. Uh, like, it's a bit like John Terry. He's, he went through the ranks and he, you call him proper Chelsea, wouldn't you, you know? Yes. But that's, uh, and then I eventually got my chance under Danny Blanche there when I was 17. Um, and I played a couple of games, a few games. Was that, that was a, when I think Butch was about to leave and went to Man United. I got just I got in the team just before he left, and I played a few games. And then um, I had I had a we was already uh, the relegated in the relegation zone. Relegated, Stone Bombs were relegated, and uh, I had um, a wisdom teeth problem. Right, and the wisdom teeth was swollen up, and. I, and they said, well, don't bother. But they, they sent me into St. Stephen's Hospital, which is now Chelsea, Westminster. Mm. And they took four of my wisdom teeth out with one go. Like. <laughs> so that was me end of my season. We were out small like, like. In them days, they didn't have the technology and all that, you know, just ripped them out. And you, had, you woke up, you could hardly speak, like, you know. So, uh, and that was that. And then Danny went. Um, and who was manager after that? It was. I think it was Jeff Hurst came in straight away, didn't he? Mm. Yeah, Jeff Hurst came in. I got in the side and I played quite regularly after that, scored a few goals. Um, you mentioned Danny Blanche Flower. He gave you your, your debut. Up the, I believe the date was the 4th of April 1979. What was Blanche Flower like as a coach? Danny, um, he had some weird things like <laughs> He had, he had one thing, he wanted us to, like when it was muddy, train with training shoes and he thought we could run on top of the mud. <laughs> Weird theories like this, like, I mean, he was brilliant with Danny, like, he wanted us to play football and all that, you know. But um, it was a, a strange time, really, like, you know, Danny was good for us. I, 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 I we're forever indebted to him, we're giving him a chance, like, you know. And uh, he was a fantastic character. And we had some fantastic, Ozzy had come back at the time as well. I don't know if you heard the story about Ozzy touching. <laughs> they had a big bath at Molesley. It was all in the belt. And Danny bent over. Oh, Ozzy grabbed him by the bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Jumped up in the air like that. The phone, all the blads know about it. You know. <laughs> Danny didn't know what was going on. Like, you know. But uh, no, it was a fantastic time. You know, uh, Ronnie Harris Bull was still there, wasn't he? Mm. I played with Ronnie in the middle of the park sometimes. He, he started playing in the middle of the park. He was like my minder. And uh, we all sort of got in the side together. Chibs got in there. Mickey Nutt was another one. I forgot about Mickey Nutt. And uh, we had Gary Lott there. Graham Wilkins, another one. He's, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a fantastic. And Johnny Bumpstead, obviously. Trevor A. Lott. Tommy. Clive Walker as well. I don't, don't know if Clive came through the ranks, did he? I can't remember. And then Rosie was coming through as well, wasn't he, you know? So we had a good good squad. I had Lee Frost, another good player. So um, that was a fantastic time, really. It's a shame that it all ended a bit sour. With that we nearly went down to the third division and all that. You know, yeah, it was one of those. Yeah. With Chelsea now in the second division, because you mentioned when you made your debut, it was down the point where Chelsea did go down. Did you see this as a chance to prove yourself, knowing that you was a young guy coming into the team? There was going to be some certain players leaving because they went down. You saw this as a, a chance to impress. I didn't look at it in that way. I just wanted to go and play football. You know, I was, I was happy to be playing. You know, and I was at, I scored a few. I ended up top scorer one season. I was scoring goals and everyone was happy. And who was unlucky? That, I think it was the first season. Jet was who we ended up. We we ended up fourth. West Ham had to beat someone in the. They played as someone who played in the cup final. So if I remember rightly. And then West Ham had to beat them to go up, and well, we and we stayed there. If the West Ham had drawn or lost, we'd have gone up, like you know. Um, I remember we was away. I think we went to bloody Arenal or somewhere in Italy. I can't remember where it was. And we found out when the, that West Ham had gone up, like you know, they won the res they got their result they wanted. And uh, that was a big disappointment, really, because we had no idea we'd go out the first division. 
at that time. Um, Jeff Hurst blamed me in his book because, uh, oh, there was a chance at Swansea ahead. I could not want to get my bloody head to it. Don't worry about that. And then he's put, he's put off Mick could have scored that goal at Swansea. We would have gone up. You know? <laughs> How can you blame one person? For, you know? That's typical Jeff Hurst for you, though, isn't it? You talked about, obviously, you, there was a couple of seasons where you did score quite a few goals. You did score your first goals for Chelsea in a League Cup tie against Plymouth. Was you relieved at that point to finally get off the mark and sort of look to cement your place in the starting eleven by being a, more of a, a, a natural goal scorer? I don't know. I don't look at it. I just go out there and play. If I score a goal, I score a goal. You know, I, was, I created a lot of chances for people. Um, yeah, I, scored, I think I scored two at Plymouth, didn't I? If I remember rightly, yeah, it was, it was nice to get off the mark, obviously. But um, as I said, I don't really look at it. I wasn't really the one that looks as I've got to score goals all the time, you know. What I mean, I was, I was taught to play with my dad, taught me to always pass the ball to people who are in better position if they are, like, you know. And uh, that's the way I played my game. Um, but the goals are just a bonus, aren't they, really, at the end of the day? I was lucky enough I got on the free kicks and penalties as well. Um, you mentioned. Sir Jeff Hurst, obviously he, he took over um, at the, the, the early part of the of that season. What was the difference between Jeff Hurst and Danny Blanchflower for you and how did each sort of treat you, whether it was the same or even differently? Well, Danny was a different kettle of fish really because he, he was an older person, he had different ideas of the game. And Jeff came in, and really, there was no real coach in them days really, you know, not real like they do now, they press and this and that, you know. I didn't come across that sort of thing until I went to QBR with Terry Venables, and he he played that. We used to play close teams down the wind that they couldn't get out of their own half the way Venables played, you know. You know? And um, I never come under sort of coaching like that before. And uh, we used to do they practice games, like you know, and they say practice. Oh, you might used to practice to be in that position, that and this, but nothing real. There's nothing really set out coaching wise, you know. We do shooting practice and crossing practice and stuff like that. There's no real. Like, uh, how can you explain it? Pattern, some of this pattern of play and all this sort of stuff, you know. There was nothing really like that in them days, if I remember rightly. So, um, you can't, like, you couldn't really compare Danny and thing, they're two different characters completely, you know. You did go from playing, I believe, from left midfield, and you decided you went to become a central midfielder. What challenges did you face with this change in your play? I didn't know. I was started as a, I was played in the centre of midfield anyway. They 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 put me in the, the left hand side to start with, and Jeff sort of played me as a centre forward at one stage. I was playing up front with bloody uh, I think with Gary Johnson or Tommy Langley, and I was playing up front for a bit that season. I scored a few goals. I remember scoring at West Ham and all that. Oh, not at West Ham. At the Bridge against West Ham. I think we beat them two one, and I was playing up front then. Like you know, he put me up there for a little bit. He seen me as a front man, and then. Uh, I I prefer to play in the middle of the park. I enjoy playing up front. It's all right, scoring a couple of goals, like you know. Over the course of that particular period, you did become an influential member of the team. You were again, you were scoring goals on a regular basis. You was producing some decent performances. With that, was you surprised that when the you know the early part of Jeff Hurst's tenure, that Chelsea didn't achieve promotion during your time there? Yeah, well, we had that one season we we just missed out on it, like, you know? and then we sort of went sort of went downhill. It was a mediocre team, and then I think John Neal came in, then, didn't he? And that's when it was it was Jeff who was in charge when when he was thir- in the, nearly went down to third division. Was that Jeff? No, it would have been uh, John Neal. John Neal, yeah, that was a, a bad season. And it, I think it was a bit of a transitional period, you know. I think I don't think I think I left after that season, didn't I? Because the reason I did, I never wanted to leave Chelsea. You know, it's my club, and I love the club, and I still do. But um, Ken Bates, I think he looks at me as a bloody not a meal ticket. But he, I was one of the players you get money for, mm. right? So the, my contract was due to be figuring that, and they offered me twenty five pound to sign on, sign a new contract, and I've been player of the, player of the year, one of the year, and. I scored a goal, and they didn't really encourage me to stay there, you know. Yeah. And they forced me in. I said, well, I'm not signing for that. So John Neal called me in, and he said, I, mean, I don't blame John Neal. It's probably it's, it's Bates is the one that's behind it all. Um, 
He said, well, we're not going to give you my best. They was going to Aberystwyth, like they used to go every year. You know, the run down the beach, six miles down the beach. Me and George used to trot over to those breakwaters. <laughs> <laughs> we were very, me and Mickey Draw were very good at running, like, you know. <laughs> so they'd all go run, tearing off. We'd be doing that, doing like, uh, you'd be doing up, up and down the sand. You'd be, people being sick and all sorts. And then at the end, of it, we had to run six miles down the beach to pick the coach up. And me and Troy just got, we ended up <laughs> jumping over the <laughs> break. What was like, I was like, oh, it's funny. I mean, Bob Wiles was with us as well, like, you know. And they'd be waiting on the coach for us when we get off. <laughs> as I say, uh, yeah. And they, anyway, they, they said to me, um, John Neal called me in and he said, look, he said, uh, we're not going to wrap that off on 25. I said, well, I'm not going to sign. So he said, well, best you stayed behind. Oh, this, is, this is how much I wanted me to stay there, right? Best you stay behind Trony and find yourself another club then. So I thought, well, oh, fair enough. That's, what you tra- that's not the way you treat your bloody people. You want to keep around the team, is it? So I ended up training on Figs Marsh in Sobotin, like, with me, oh, me dog. There's Figs in, in the mail. Me running around a bit, made a big thing about it. Me being left behind by Chelsea and the bump, bump. And I was training with me dog with a picture on the back of the Daily Mail and all this whole crap. And uh, and that's it. Eventually, I've, Bobby Gould had gone. And he was at Coventry. He asked me to go to Coventry. He wanted me to go to Coventry. Mm. So I went up there and trained with. Him. I was trained on my own at first. Then Bobby got in contact. I went up and trained with them. Um, and they wanted me to sign for them up at Coventry. Um, and then Venners came in to me. He phoned me up. And. Um, Rangers just got promoted to the first division as well and they had a good sub in the cup final and all that. The only thing I was wary about was going on that plastic pitch. Right. And um, although I'd still, I didn't want to leave Chelsea, right? But I, my my hand was false, like, you know, there was a, it was terrible what they'd done to me, really, because after the last game of the season, there was like a lynch mob outside. They said, don't leave the club and all this, you know. They had to get security to get me out of the bloody ground because they thought I was going to leave the club. It's unbelievable, it was. And... Uh, yeah, and that was so. Then, then that's when I decided I I was tossing that way. And then David Pleat was another way. He wanted me to go to Luton, another plastic another pitch. Plastic yeah, pitch. so that's what was a plastic pitch. I don't play on plastic pitch. Only only against their teams, like you know. <laughs> and it's funny enough, I ended up signing with Oldham later, and that was a plastic <laughs> pitch as well. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned John Neal earlier, and he obviously he he did replace Jeff Hurst. D- apart from the, obviously the issues when you leave uh, Chelsea apart from that was John Neal okay with you did you feel that you had a, like, a decent player coach relationship with him uh, John, uh, John was fantastic I had no problem with John Neal at all he was good as gold I mean he's a, he, he ran out of fags and we used to smoke roll ups me and Mickey Droy on the coach <laughs> and John Neal ran it come out he said Mick can I have one of your roll ups he said I can't run out of fags <laughs> I got well with John he was a good, fantastic manager like you know I've got no problem with him he, uh, I know he used to walk, walk in at Harlands and he'd just go strutting down a, strutting down a corridor past the changing rooms and he goes, Oh, we're the lads, oh, we're the lads. And he'd walk out into the pitch and he'd be walking around the pitch just looking at the grass and all that. Draws your turn and he's out there again, worm spotting. Look at him, look. <laughs> the next season you picked up some. Really good form again, and you scored six goals in ten games, which even today's standards people would love to have. You were certainly becoming a fan favourite. Do you have any stories of certain fans showing their appreciation to you? I don't know. What do you mean by that? No, in terms of um, the terraces. Oh, it's nice for him to sing your name and all that. And obviously that, that goal against Tottenham, I say still talk about it the daylight, you know. And it's that, it's a, we should have won that game that day. It's unbelievable, really. We had a couple of chances late though. I think Colin Lee had a chance and Clive had a chance and might have scored it, had it, mm. the ball run in their favour. I'm not blaming them, don't get me wrong. But uh, it could have gone either way, that game. So I was going to say, before the Tottenham game, there was a small matter of playing Liverpool, who the season before won the European Cup. Yeah. We beat them in the FA Cup 2-0. What was the atmosphere like that day? And obviously we sp- I spoke to... Um, a few other players that were, were, were that were part of that team, and they just said it was one of the best games that they played in terms of matching up against the top side of Liverpool. How did you see it from 
that day. Oh, the, the support was unbelievable. The, the Chelsea, uh, Chelsea, the West, uh, the last day I've gone now, haven't I? Liverpool and Tottenham game, the, the atmosphere, I've never known nothing like it at the bridge. It was unbelievable. Um, I mean, I've been back to these, this, these days, if you don't get the atmosphere we had there then, because he'd had the, the terraces and that, you know, and the, it was f further away from the pitch, like, you know, the, the atmosphere was unbelievable. You couldn't even hear yourself talk. So, uh, no, it was fantastic. Chelsea support was fantastic. We, as you mentioned, we did lose to Tottenham in the following round, but you scored a, a brilliant free kick, I should say, right, right in the top left uh, corner. But we would go on to lose the game three two. Our season seemed to fizzle out after that. Was you frustrated at this point, considering how well the season started? I think everyone was frustrated to lose that game, but. Um... It shouldn't have affected the way we played, really, at the end of the day. I don't know. What was the outcome of that season? Do we peter out? Is that, 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 is that the third division one? It's not that one, is it? No, no, because the, that was the, that was the year season, season before. Yeah. I think I got player of the year that game that year, didn't I? That one, I can't remember. But um, we shouldn't have petered out, really. I just, I just don't know what happened. You mentioned the time where Chelsea nearly got relegated to the third division. There was that game against Bolton where yeah. Clive Walker scored the all-important goal. We'd, we'd go on to win the game. Did you have any concerns that the club might get relegated? And what was the mood like in the changing rooms? Was there some worried about where the club could be at, at the end of the season? Oh, of course there was. But like, I always had confidence. Like in the, I had confidence in all the players. Like, you know, I knew we'd, beat, we'd, we'd get the result at the end of the day. Um, because I'm, I'm not a doubter. I was, I was believing my own ability. I believe we, you know, we, we was a good enough side to stay up, you know. And I always remember at the end of the day, we all went up to Chelsea for and threw our shirts there <laughs> and all that, like you know. But we, we had a great relationship. I mean, with the Chelsea support. I mean, at Chelsea, we threw our shirts there. They bloody took, deducted the money out of me bloody wages. The next month. <laughs> that's, that's how bloody tight they were. It's unbelievable. I mean, I, the support, I mean, me and Shiv had come over once with Bridge, and you know, I used to have an old green, green jag, and, and was, we'd pull up with Wasworth Bridge to a right down the, I can't remember, the Imperial Way, what it's called, and uh, there'd be supporters going across the track, they'd look, oh, me, I said, you go out in the game, I said, yeah, I said, jump in the back, then I'll, give them, I'll take them down, to the, they'd come to the ground with me, like, you know, say, I'm walking down, you know. That's the sort of relationship that you have. You go out the game, you go in a uh, Palmerston or somewhere like one of the pubs and have a drink with the boys, a black boy, you know, and have a drink with the supporters. That's what it should be like. So, um, fantastic, really. Because also with that game against Bolton, obviously in between that, you also contributed hugely in Chelsea staying up by scoring crucial goals against the likes of Cambridge where we won, Leeds and also Oldham. Did you feel that you had a say, like point to prove because you felt that your ability was too good for where Chelsea was at that at that time? No, I don't think I wanted to prove. I just want to. I just want to play well any, any time I could. You know, it's, you can go out there. You want to put them. Well, I sound like one of them bloody pun, a performance in, don't you? <laughs> I don't want to sound like one of them pundits. But uh, no, I just went out. I just want to play well and do, do, try and do the best you can. You know, that's what you've got to do. You don't. Know? I was told that you know, my dad always said to me, you haven't got to prove nothing to no one, just go out and play your game. Which is right, so it should be, isn't it, really? You know, you haven't got to prove nothing to them, haven't you? Because they wouldn't play you there in the first place. You wouldn't be in the team, would you? So uh, I took that attitude, really. And what was the mood like in the dressing room once that season finished? Was it just one of relief or just move on? Or was it a case of, right, come on, guys, let's kick on and try and do better next season? Yeah, well, that, well, I think that's when John Neal came in, didn't he? Oh, he's, oh, he's, no, he was there then, wasn't he? He was yeah, the manager. He was there, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think he, he had a transitional period. He was trying to get other players in. I think Joey Jones came, didn't he? And, um, who else? I think Dennis Rofe was there at the time, wasn't he? Yeah, Dennis Rofe there. Chris Hutchins came in, didn't he? Hutchins, yeah. Yeah, who else came in? Oh, Phil Driver. Um, well, Canners came in as well, didn't he, at some stage? Early 80s, yeah. 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 So um, that was a bit of transitional, part. but the party went on. <laughs> As per usual with Chelsea. <laughs> I think we used to get to Christmas and it was all over for us. <laughs> uh, 
It was an interesting summer of 83. Chelsea did bring in quite a few players, the likes of Dixon, Nigel Spackman, and other players as well. You would leave Chelsea to join QPR. Uh, but, um, when I was going through my notes, it was actually a tribunal fee that was paid for over £155,000. You mentioned already, you know, the sort of how you left Chelsea, but what was it about Terry Venables and QPR that appealed to you? And was there any of the lads at Chelsea that said to you, no, nah, Mick, stay for at least one more season, see how this pans out? Well, I didn't see him. I didn't see him because he left me behind. Like they all went to have a risk with. And I was left to my own device. I didn't have an agent or nothing like in them days. So uh, I was just left to my own device. I didn't really... really the funny thing was, I signed for the only reason I went to Terry because he he said he'd get me in the England team, all right. Which is, I've got close to that at the time of mentioning in, the, in that era, like you know. Um, I didn't get there in the end of the day, but I played well at QB. I mean, also the, he 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 told me the way they played, you know. I mean, he played a certain way. He told me how I fit in, and they had some good players, and they just they just uh, they've been in the FA Cup final and they got promoted, didn't they? And uh, I bit into it, and I went there. And I, well, we it, we ended up full. We should have won the first division that year. It was also as a plastic pitch, but our our form was better away from home. Right. right? We I think we uh, we I remember going to Highbury, and um, we beat them two nil, and they couldn't get out of their, in the second half. They couldn't get out of their own half. Right. You know, we played we had the offside trap. We played them days and all that, and um, but as you say that. I didn't want well, to. I said I didn't want to leave Chelsea. No, I didn't discuss it with the other players. So I didn't see them. You know, and I, I, the funny thing was I went back there. Um, I think I was playing at home to Mill. I think Mill was always playing. The first time I'd been back to the bridge since I'd left, I went back to see, to see the players and that. You know, and uh, the thing that annoyed me, we'd been over the years. Like my mum, my mum, and but Johnny Bumps's mum. They, they said they, they should stand by the disabled people down by the. They said their cars there and wheelchairs and all that. And we used to do a lot of like functions, like uh, charity walks and stuff like raising money to get disabled shelters for them. And we went back. I went back. I could not believe what I was seeing. Ken Bates was using the disabled shelter to sell programs out. Of. It was a, I thought it was absolutely disgusting. No one ever knew it at the time, but. It, Oh, I thought oh, I was going to have me say today now. <laughs> it was selling programs out of them. You know, we done away, we done disco, we had a disco up there, and oh, my mate doing a disco. Ray Wilkins coming, those Man United were playing in town that night, and Ray come with Stapleton and uh, Brian Robson and Paul McGrath, believe it or not. <laughs> they all came as well, like, and all the players and the supporters were there. And then we, we ended up, we got, we got the, the, um, the disabled shelters, and then. As soon as I left there, I, I couldn't believe it when I went back there. They were selling programs. I told me, Mary, she was fuming. She wanted to go out and beat Batesy up. But, uh, but that's that's the way it went, like you know. And uh, I didn't get a chance to say goodbye. Anyway, that was it. I was off. It's like I was shipped out of there, really, like you know. And how did you get on when you played Chelsea for like QPR and the other clubs? Did like you played for, did you feel that you did well against them? Not just because it was your former club, but because obviously how you was as a player. No, I just I just go out and play again. We beat them in a in the uh, the QPR. Um, that was a, we got to the final of the Milk Cup, didn't we? Yeah, we played them. We played them in the quarter final of the Milk Cup. I think it was over two legs. I don't get two legs. No, it was it one leg? When it started, it was muddy night. I played right in that game. We beat and Michael Robinson scored them about. 40 yards, didn't they? I mean, just loved the keepers. They were stuck. It was uh, the pitch. Was there. It's never been played at game, to be honest with you. Like, but I think Mickey Azzard was playing at Chelsea them days, if I remember rightly. Jerry Murphy and all them, like, you know. But, uh, and we beat them, like, you know. We went on to the final. No, I missed out on the final because um, we beat Liverpool. Over, that's it. Liverpool over two legs um, to get to the final. And my back played up, and I was, that was when I was, I was in big trouble. And I missed the final, playing all the other rounds before that. And I didn't play in the final. But I was lucky because I played at Wembley with the schoolboys, like, you know. So I, was, I was lucky I already achieved that when I was 15. But it was disappointing to miss out on the final. And then, um, but that, 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 could have, that back injury could have finished me, like, and I was nearly. Mm. They tried, tried to keep. Oh, that's another story. 
But I'll tell you a story about the the uh, tribunal. It's quite funny actually. We went we went to the FA headquarters down in I was with Terry Venables and we used to call him Fishy. Jim Gregory, the chairman of who was a character he was. Um there's me, Venners and Jim Gregory. In Chelsea turned up there was John Neal, Ian McNeil, Sheila Marsden, Ken Bates. I don't know, <laughs> after about five of them right you know? No, they went in and I went in with Terry and and Fishy we called it. We went in we went in first and they put their case I don't say nothing like you know. And then we come out, and then the Chelsea, they was in there for ages, and they come out. They call you all back in, and they said, boom, boom, boom. And I think the Chelsea wanted 300 or 350 grand for me or something like that, right, you know? And they set the thing at 155 grand. And I see, like, the faces of the Chelsea, where I was gutted, right? Mm. And they walked out in front of us, and we was behind them, we was behind them like, and Venners have looked at me, and he, he was <laughs> sat fishing, they was going, they was laughing their heads up behind their backs and pointing at us. What a bunch of mugs them lot Because <laughs> they'd had a result, you know what I mean, really, yeah. for them, you know. So, yeah. Uh, that's, that's the story of the whole situation, really. Superb. The rest is history, as they say. No, I like that. That's great. Um, one thing we do, we'll probably talk about the current events now and something that does make people laugh, and that is VAR. Um, the concept of it, it's probably so some of it is good for football, but it's how it's been used. I've asked this to all me guests, uh, Mike. So, what's your take on VAR? Are you for it, against it? What's your honest opinion? Now, I thought at first, I thought it'd be, a, I thought it'd be a good thing. They can't even do it properly. Can't? It's a joke, really, isn't it? I think the only thing they should use it for is the the um, for the goal line incidents, like you know, a crossbar or what they are, you know, when the goal line, whether it's a goal or not, mm. forget about the offsides. Because it, I mean, even we can see from the sitting on TV here, yeah. I can watch it and I say, Well, that's definitely offside, or it's not offside, and they, they, they give a diff completely different view of it. And they've got all the technology there, it's ridiculous, it's ruining the game. Mm. And it's, I mean, the referee, the linesmen don't put their flags up, right? And then no one knows what's going on, do they? They score a goal, and they, oh, they, let's check it up on VIR. And five minutes later, they'd send a referee up to go and look at a thing. You know, it's it's actually scandalous, isn't it? I, 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 I don't agree with it. Now, the only thing I think you should use it for is for the goal line things, you know, all these hand balls as well. I mean, it, oh, it's ridiculous. Some of, the, some of the decisions I've seen are actually abysmal. How would you have got on with it in your day? I don't know. You wouldn't, would you, really? It's, it's, a, it's disgraceful, isn't it? I mean, they, they can't see that on the TV. They, they've got all the technology... They, they can't make a decision within a couple of minutes whether that's offside or not. They're going by people's arms or their big toe or whatever. It's ridiculous. I don't agree with myself. It should just be for the goal line technology, what we want to call it. See where the ball's over the line. That's it. Go back to the old way. At least, you, at least you, there's a decision made there and there. Whether it's right or wrong, it's made. It keeps the game flowing, doesn't it? It's better for the supporters as well, really, isn't it? Yeah, I think VAR's one that's not for supporters. It's more for the entertainment entertainment aspect of football and obviously it makes TV viewers go up because of the issue with VAR and everything else it's, yeah of course it is yeah of course it does a um, few questions left Mike before we wrap this up I want to talk about Chelsea of 2023 um, new manager in place pretty much a whole new team that it was over the last two years What's been your take on it? Are you surprised with the amount of influx of new players has come in or the remit now that it's more young players or players under 25? What's been your sort of opinion on current day Chelsea? Well, I think it's good to see the young players all come. The players, it's, it's a shame that the players that come through the ranks they don't get a chance, do they? That's the problem. They're bringing younger players in right now, you know? And I think to be fair, people have got to be patient. You know, they just don't throw a sight together the youngsters like that and expect them to win everywhere. But they, I, think, I think they're getting better all the time. I know they've been unfortunate with a couple of injuries they've had, haven't they? Lost that, I can't say their names after them, like, you know. Um, but they've lost players that, that, that were playing well. Um, but the young, they've got some good players here. And when they click, they were beating. I mean, they, they clicked against Arsenal, really, didn't they? Mm -hmm. oh, at first, oh, Arsenal didn't look like a team, did they? No, they were you know? Really that's unbelievable. And I was, I was so pleased because I've been saying to people, be patient, you know. They, they, they'll they come good. I'm sure they will. Um, it's just a silly mistake by the goalkeeper. It sort of changed the game, didn't it, really? 
And I'm not into this playing out from the back. It's all right to play at times. Right? I like playing football, but they, they're overdoing it now, aren't they, you know? There's nothing wrong with a goalie just kicking it no, long exactly. and just putting the players up, giving you a few 10 yards. Two nil up. <laughs> Don't want to be playing in there, do you, really? No, absolutely not. Yeah, they have been bloody taken off and subbed off, I tell you. <laughs> Trying to play out there. <laughs> well, I think even the teammates would probably not be happy oh, with no, the way. I'll no. tell you, you get slaughtered. <laughs> um, how do you think Chelsea will do this season? Do you think it will be a productive one for Pods? Do you think there may even be a, a domestic trophy in in his future? Oh, I don't know. I think they'll, they can only get better, can't they? You know... And they showed that against Arsenal, didn't they? Really, they're, they're getting into the buying his way of playing, aren't they? You know, and I, th- I think I think he's a great manager, really, to be honest with you. And um, as Tottenham's lost, they shouldn't have got rid of him. Really, Tottenham, I don't think. Tottenham played some of their best football underneath him, didn't they? Yeah, they did, yeah. You know, they got in, they got into the Champions League final. Yeah. So um, no, I think he's a good manager, and um, I think you know things only look better, can't it? Really. Yeah. Look up for the, I think, for the rest of the season. They get better and better and better as the more they play together. If they can keep a settled side, like, you know, about the silly nearly injuries, like you lost, what's his name? Reese James, James, you know. Ben Chill's not playing, is he, you know? Um, And there's the other fellow, Chuka Chaka, what his name? I don't know. Chuka Menka. Chuka Menka, I I can't say their names, you know. He was doing well, wasn't he? He I think West Ham, he got. He's doing, yeah. Hand, yeah. yeah, he's playing well was all that day when he got a shame yeah. he got injured. But I think he's a good player, and it'd be it's good to get him back as well, wouldn't it? Mm, it, would. it certainly would be, yes. Final question How would you look back on your time at Chelsea? I thoroughly enjoyed it. Chelsea's my club, I still support them. Oh, the silly tenor. <laughs> tenor each way would win the league still. <laughs> I do it every year, you know what I mean? <laughs> But uh, no, I've had a fantastic time with Chelsea. It was just a shame uh, the way it ended, really. You know, I was disappointed by the way it ended. And the way that, I'm, not, I'm not crying about it, you know, but it, I thought it deserved to be treated a bit better than that, you know. Um, but uh, I still support the club and uh, I wish them well. Well, Mike, we wish you well on the Blue Day podcast. Thank you very much for being part of the show today really appreciate it and hopefully we'll see you down at the bridge quite soon as well supporting Poch and his uh, young guns yeah thank you very much for coming and interviewing me no you finish your donut now <laughs> <laughs> cheers thank you anyway <laughs>